Hi everyone, welcome back. In um, this second part of our building a score uh, series, well actually the series is called First Steps in Opus Modus, and this is the second video where we started a score. Uh, so we're gonna continue with that. If you haven't seen the beginning of the score, I would uh, recommend watching the previous video. It will bring you up to speed here. Um, or start at the beginning of the series because um, we will go first we talk about individual elements and then later we start to build that into something now let's see where we where we left this score the last time to be honest we didn't leave it in a very good place um, there's a couple of things i don't like most notably these uh, this signature here is very odd a quarter plus one triplet um, and also the right hand is very high, it, it really is very difficult to read and um, to be honest it, it also wouldn't sound that nice probably. So that is actually a very easy fix. Also I want these chords to be lower so I can simply transpose the whole, um, this is the left hand down uh, an octave. So to do that we use our trusty pitch, pitch transpose and we say minus 12 and we transpose that whole thing down. Um, let's listen to that. Let's evaluate this. All right, so now our chords are lower there and here it looks much better. Now, uh, the other issue here is a little bit more tricky to solve. And the reason we went with this is because it does sound really nice here. It goes from this very slow, slow place. And it sort of picks up this tempo, which is really nice. But of course, we need to do this with a tempo change and not by, by simply inputting triplets. Because if you look at them, you can see that these are just eight notes. Uh, and that's why it comes up with this. Like if you want this to be a, a full bar, you would have to add one more triplet note, which will um, change the sound, of course. So rather than working with this, what we can do, like the culprit here is this motif B. We can see this as well when we evaluate this by itself. Um, it gets this odd time signature, whereas if we added another note here, for example, it would be a full 3-8 bar. Um, but since I did like the, the sound of it, what we're going to do is we're going to change these triplets to 16 notes. And now it will, uh, it will display correctly, but of course it will sound slower. So to deal with this, uh, what we can do is we can input a list for the different tempos and we can make our intro a different tempo than this section. And uh, in order to do that, you would want to check how long the intro is because then you are able in your preview score and later in the dev score that we're going to use, you're able to say, all right, I want this tempo to be applied for this many bars. Now, what you can see, what we did with the left hand is we inputted this 4-4 time signature. And if we evaluate that, and or actually listen to it, even though it looks like uh, 16 bars here, we can see that it's actually 8. And the reason for that is we are using our chords, and the chords by themselves have no bar information. It's one long list. And uh, that's why we put them here into each individual bars. Now you see that we get sort of a quarter note time signature. And um, the first thing we do in our dictum is we set this to half notes. And that's why it becomes uh, 16 bars long, because all of these are now like half notes. And later we actually apply a signature to that. And then we can see that the real thing is eight bars. So don't let that confuse you too much. Um, the thing that matters the most is that we end up with uh, eight bars in 4-4. So for the sake of consistency, even though it's not necessary here because this is manually created, um, but we can do this here as well. We can say OMN to time signature. And then at the end, we add our four, four there. And we close that thing. That's for our melody line. So now that that is correct, we can take any of these, left A or right A. Actually, let me move this down one line because uh, that's what we did here as well. So now what we can do is we can check the length of this. So we can say length right A, and it should show us eight. So with that, we go to our uh, tempo here in the preview, preview score, and we are gonna create a nested list for this. So we say, all right, we want a BPM of 60 for eight bars. And then after that, we go into our B section. And since these were triplet notes before, and the tempo was 60, that's a very easy calculation. This means that 
if we wanted to sound the same, we would go for a BPM of 90 here. And um, let's also actually check the size of this. Let's say length um, right B. You can see this is 32 bars. So we say, okay, we want a BPM of 90 for 32 bars. And then we close this list. Now let's listen to that. So you can see here, actually it didn't. So right now you can see it didn't apply this. And that's because we haven't evaluated these variables again. So I just go here and I press command E on all of them so that it actually will apply or changes. This is an important thing in Lisp. Okay, so let's listen if it sounds the same. All right, that's great. It looks much better. Um, and it sounds exactly the same. So with that out of the way, um, let's go to our new section, the third section. So I'm gonna copy this line here and I'm gonna say section C right there. Uh, enter some white space for visibility. Um, and here, uh, I think I'd like to go back to, or I'd like to go to a different kind of rhythm and also a different kind of progression. And I actually already have a progression prepared, which is uh, very similar to the first one, but um, rather than starting on a D, it starts on C. So uh, to remind you, this was the first one. And this is the progression we're gonna use for section C. I think that, um, that should give us a nice, uh, nicely different color there. Um, so let's start with a motif for, um, let's start with the left hand. Type left and we'll type motif C left, of course, prepended with a set F. And then again here, we're gonna go for our uh, double bar and we're gonna create sort of a waltz kind of rhythm. So we could do something like this maybe. Um, let's add a dynamic there as well, and then close that. All right, that sounds nice. Um, I'm going to increase my audition tempo a little bit. So we go to settings and we go audition, and let's go with I don't know 88 here, something like this. This is the tempo that you hear when you press Command One on the line just so that we go through it a little bit faster. Um, and now we're gonna repeat that based on the length of our chords again, which we've seen before. We use a gen repeat for that. We can give this a number, we can say eight, and then motif C left, and it's gonna repeat it eight times. Um, what I'd like to do though, is base this on the length of our chords again. So um, again, we'll choose the length function, and this time we use chords two. And let's listen to that. Right, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna actually add this um, this pitch symbol after the first note, so everything will be, or a pitch, I mean, like the velocity. All right, and then we set this equal to, let's go with, let's keep our same naming convention that we had before. So I'll choose this and I'll copy this as well. Uh, because it's not fun to type. Um, one, one thing, by the way, um, I might have showed this before, but the reason we did this double list right here is because now if we evaluate this, we can see that everything gets added to its own bar. If I have a single list here, and then I evaluate this, we get one very long bar of values, which is not what we want. We basically have no awareness, and then we would have to use this omn to time signature function again to fix that. Um, so this is a bit of an easier way to just create a nested list right from the start. So we have that, and then let's go into our length divide, um, just because it's so fun. Length divide, we talked about it, um, the divide, um, it allows you, or yeah, it allows you to, to divide any number of nodes within a bar by a certain, uh, is it called the nominator or the denominator? I never know. Um, but the first argument here is a, a list where we say how many nodes we want to divide per bar. I'm gonna say one for now, and then what you want to divide it by. So that's the length, right? So I want to divide the lengths by two. Um, and then of course it needs to know which sequence you want that to do with. 
Um, so we choose our previously created variable and let's um, listen to this. So now from every bar, it's going to choose one value and it's going to divide it by two. And that's why it speeds up there. So sometimes um, this is the, the first note, uh, such as in this bar 16. Sometimes it's the, uh, the last one or the second note in the bar. And then uh, what you can hear is that right now we get some chromatic pitches suddenly. This is what it sounded like before. But with the length divided, it sounds like this. And you might be wondering, well, why does it do that? Because it's a length divide. We're not doing anything with pitch. Well, that's because once you divide the note and, and duplicate it, basically, um, it automatically chooses a note um, higher or lower than, than the previous one. You can actually take a look at the, at the document here. Um, you can see that um, if you input an R, pitch repeat, it will not do that. But the default is random. So you can see that it goes actually uh, minus uh, or up one or two, basically. So if I do, if I add this R here for repeat the pitch, then we get this. of course much more harmonic but we don't really need to do that because um, we haven't mapped this to our path um, anyway this actually brings up a good point like there's of course many ways to work with opus modus and you can use your harmonic path right at the beginning when you start to work with something um, but the more experience you get the more you'll find you want to put your your path at the end so you st start working with rhythms mostly and, and sort of structural kind of things and then later you can you can apply everything to a tonality you can fix everything to be within a certain tonality um, so that's what we're doing as well so for now we don't um, need that um, because we'll use the harmonic path actually right after this um, one one more thing left i want to do is i think that the vision right now it's happening a little bit too predictably so i'm going to choose section again and put in some fairly arbitrary numbers here i'm going to sometimes uh, skip a couple of them um, to to only apply this to certain to certain bars so that it doesn't happen everywhere let's say something like this and then we need to remove this parentheses there and close that okay that's better so now it only chooses some moments where it's going to divide that so let's copy our variable name and Let's increase it by one and close our function. Now let's go with that uh, harmonic path uh, because that will sound nice. Um, so let's go there, harmonic path. And this takes the path itself, which uh, we decided to use our chords to. And then it takes the, uh, the actual variable. So there will be two in our case. Let's listen to that by itself. I need to evaluate this first. Now with the harmonic path, um, we saw before that we get quite some interesting options. Uh, one of them is the type, which is how it's go going to map the pitches um, from the path um, or from the, from the sequence to the path rather. So if we type type here, we can choose descending order or ascending. Uh, we can choose randomly or random order, which means uh, switch between the two. You can find you can find all these options here um, within the type. I will go with random order, and I also want to take a look at octave. So octave is how it's going to map the notes from the like which, which octave it's going to take for the mapping. So if the octave is set to path, it will take the, um, it will use the octaves that are in our chords. If it's set to sequence, it will use the octaves that we defined in our, in our motif right here. Um, so I think the, the sequence is the default. Let's try path so that we get some, uh, some lower notes.
Yeah, I really like that. Let's uh, let's stick with that. Now, for now, this is all still pretty static. Uh, we used only one velocity. So um, let's let's use a, a vector to velocity function because this one allows us to uh, sort of more programmatically set um, our velocity values. So I'll put that in. And the first thing this takes is a, sort of a range. So um, remember, we can do this and then we can do something like this and we get everything in between that dynamic range. Um, I prefer to use floating point values um, because it, to me it looks a little bit more precise. Um, so these are just the values in between 0 and 1. So right now you see that we have a rather small range. Um, and then after that, we need, of course, a vector. So for a vector, we could use gen sign and give it 32 values, whatever. And then let's see which error we get there. Oh, yeah, we don't have enough values for sign. Let's look it up. It takes at least a resolution, a frequency, and an amplitude. So for resolution, let's do 128. Um, frequency, let's say 3. Amplitude, 1.0. And now let's evaluate this. So in this case, it's going to create 128 values um, within that range, and it's going to uh, cycle run, or it's it's going to cycle because it's it's a, a sine wave. So they go, they will go up and down. Now I want this to be more random. So rather than gen sine, I'm going to choose gen noise, and this one only takes, um, or it can only work with one argument. So I'm going to just choose three random noise values. If I evaluate this a couple of times, we get three values between zero and one. And it's going to map that to anywhere within this range. So if I evaluate the outer function, we always get three different uh, velocities there. So I will call this dynamics left and store that. And um, we can use this then in our omn replace function. And omn replace, it can take an attribute such as pitch. You can say, for example, C4, D2, whatever. And then it takes the sequence uh, where you want to replace, in this case, the pitches from. So that was this one. But if we do this, It, takes, it keeps our original rhythm, but it will replace all the pitches with just these two. Of course, you can put in uh, another list here as well. Uh, you could add more. Right, that's fun. Um, but that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to work with the velocity. So we'll choose velocity here, velocity. And then we need to put in the new velocities that we wanted to use. So this we call the dynamics left. And then it takes our sequence. So that sounds a little bit more playful like that. Um, I will evaluate this as well. And let's also work on the uh, articulations. And for this, we can also use the omn replace function, but I want to take it a little bit further for this one. But let's start with omn replace, and rather than velocity, we choose articulation. And um, for this, let's use the random pick function. And if we visit that, we can see that the random pick, it um, with only if you only give it a sequence, it will just pick one value from that sequence. So um, what we can do here is uh, rather than using with numbers as in the example, we can work with articulations such such as staccato, marcato, pedal, etc. And then um, it can also take a probability. So if I set the probability to 0 0.1, um, I need to say prop 0 0.1, then um, let's evaluate this a couple of times. You can see that most of the time it will go marcato or staccato because with 0 0.1 it will sort of go to the lower range whereas if I say 0 0.9 it should more often choose a pedal um, which you can see indeed happens. So this probability is, is allows us to skew between the, the ending of the list and the beginning of the list there. I want uh, almost never a pedal. Probably I just simply never want a pedal. But for now, let's set this to 0 0.2. Uh, and then the OMN replace also, as before, takes the section itself. So that was, I'll just copy this and add that 0.4 here. 
to listen what the whole thing sounds like. Um, and we're making a mistake here because I need to close this random pick function. Let's go like this. All right, that's very fun already. Um, but the thing is, I don't want this OMN replaced to like this random pick, as you can see, um, if we evaluate the whole function, it chooses one and then it applies this to everything basically. Um, so every time you, you evaluate this, it might choose a different one, but it either will make everything staccato or everything marcato or everything pedal. So what I want to do is I want to wrap this in the do section and that's just, because it's cool, I guess. Um, with do section, what we can do is we uh, give it a binary list of the sections where we want the function, which it also takes, to be applied. So this do section, let's start with something like this, where we say, all right, let's imagine we have um, four bars and the first one is not going to do anything. And the second one, apply the function that comes after this. And that function is OMN replace in this case. Now, this um, function, we don't want it to evaluate at this point. We want the do section to decide when it's going to evaluate based on this binary list here. And to do that, we need to pass this list as data. And in Lisp, we do this very simply by adding a single quote in front of the list. And this will take this, will take this whole line and it will put it into a data form that do section will later sort of unwrap and understand. And this is not the only, only example we have of that. If we go to the dictum, for example, example. Um, uh, let's scroll down a little bit to the more advanced examples. Um, we see some, well here for example, we see a pitch transpose and then um, normally with pitch transpose we set the transposition. Um, we do it somewhere here I guess. Um, at the end here we do pitch transpose minus 12 and then we have our sequence there. But in this case, it takes an X. And that's because this pitch transpose function is wrapped within the dictum function. So the dictum already knows about the sequence that we want to use. So um, this variable is being replaced by an X and then dictum will map the, the sequence to that variable. That's a lot of talk. I mean, you don't even need to remember this. It's just one thing that, that I wanted to point out. We can see here with dictum as well, it starts with that, with that single quote because this is basically data and, and, and dictum is going to handle all of that. So long story short, instead of uh, this variable here, we choose an X there. And that's because do section also, of course, needs to know about the sequence we want to apply it to. So we can see that the third argument there is a sequence. So right now we have our first, um, let's put this on new lines, can be a little bit easier to see. Then we have the second, and then we have the section itself, which was a variable. Now let's listen to this. Now you can see that we actually do get different articulation because it will be this function will be evaluated per bar rather than once for the whole section. So this we want to set, let's say um, we are at five, left point five. And let's put this there. We can, with all of these, we can um, hold shift and then use your arrow keys to select it. And then you press tab, which will indent it automatically to a nicer format. Now, if you're wondering why uh, we still see these pedal markings here at the end, even though we only specified four bars here. That's because it will loop over that. Uh, so it will just start repeating this list once it, it runs out. I actually want to create this list um, programmatically as well. So what I will use for that is a gen weight function. And gen weight is incredibly powerful because it um, allows you to, to put in any values. Let, let's say I want eight different values. Let's uh, say I want pianissimo and the probability that this happens is one. And then I also want mezzo forte and the probability that happens is gonna be nine. So now it should uh, put out in total eight values, but it should more often choose a mezzo forte value. I need to... Uh, do this properly. This is a single list that needs to be a double list. So you can see it more closely here. We get, pre, or in this case, we get all mezzo forte. If I start to lower this number, 
we get some pianissimo in there as well. Um, if I really increase this number, let's say 15, um, we get mostly pianissimo there. Let's set this very low, etc. So um, this is what gen weight can do. And in our case, we want a binary list. So I want to say 0 and 1. And let's say the chance that 1 occurs is 1, and the chance that 0 occurs is 9. So now we get mostly zeros. Uh, pretty much all the zeros for all these evaluations. Um, let's make this number a little bit bigger. I do want to have, I do want the do section to mostly not be applied, I think, so that just on some bars we get these, um, we get these markers. I'm also going to remove the pedal because I didn't like the sound of that. So let's say 28 for zero and the probability, let's make it uh, 10 for one. So now we get a binary list ourselves. Let's make this list the same as the length um, of our section. Um, to do that, well, actually, we knew the length. It was it was 32. Let's see if we can read this already from, from here. Let's say length um, OSDC left point 0.4. That is actually 32. Uh, we could use this in there as well so that it automatically creates the length that we need for this whole section. Um, and then we can call this um, just sections, I guess, left sections. And we close that. So now, rather than having this list right here, we can just copy and paste that. So just to show you, this will create a list with mostly zeros. And if I start to lower this number for the one, it will be even more zeros. And if I lower this other number, um, it will be mostly ones, etc. So we use that and we apply this to the do section, which is going to choose on which bar this function is going to be applied. That's, that's the whole trick here. So then finally, we end up with this. Now, one um, other function I want to use here, just in case, is the chord pitch unique, which we looked at in the, um, I think, in the, in the chords and tonality video, chord pitch unique. Uh, the only thing this does is it takes out any double notes that might occur. So um, with double notes, I mean basically exactly the same note on the same position, which right now I don't see happening here, um, but the risk of that happening always exists when you're uh, generating things on the fly. I think if we go to seek here rather than path um, and then evaluate that. Uh, here you can see an example, this C right there. Um, and these notes, they will, they, they will sort of sound louder as well. It doesn't sound so great. Um, so to deal with that, we use our chord pitch unique, which also always makes sure that um, those double notes are removed. So I'll change this back to path and we'll just use this here. It only takes that one variable. And then um, we can set this to simply left C because I think we're pretty much done with the left hand. Uh, so let's clean this up slightly. And then let's go to our right hand. So for the right hand, I'd also like to start with a motif. Um, so we'll say motif C right. And for this, I'd like to use two bars. Um, I already mapped this out before, so I can just type it. And we open a new bar. We start with 16 node rest. We input a, a crescendo, <laughs> crescendo. I should really practice this at home. Um, B4, foot, C5 and mezzo piano. Let's see if that looks good. Uh, I think I'm missing something there. Um, I'm missing rest here. All right, great. Um, so that's going to be the motif that we use. And um, again, we want to uh, repeat that based on the length of a chord. There's a little bit of a catch here. So um, let's do this. Let's say... Um, Right point one, set F. I'm going to copy this. 
and um, we use our gen repeat, and then we can say length chords, uh, chords two we have to do because we're using a new progression right now, and then uh, we put in the motif. So if we do this and we uh, play that, you can see we get uh, 64 bars here, and that's because um, we have two bars for our motif. So right now it's twice as long. Remember the section was 32. So we actually need to divide the length that we get from the chords by two because our motif is longer. And um, normally what you would think is probably something like this, one plus two, if we want to do math. Um, if we evaluate this, we get an error. And that's because in Lisp we use prefix um, notation, I guess they call it, which is where you add the operator before the actual number. Numbers. So uh, this would do what you would expect it to do. Um, and that's the same for the length chords here. So if we want to divide something, we also use the division symbol at the beginning there. So what we need to do is here at our division, then it's gonna evaluate. So first it's gonna evaluate this value, and then it's going to divide that by two in our case. And that should make us end up with 32 bars. Right, that works. Um, it's just a little bit of a thing to know. It's not so complicated, but um, yeah, it, it's, you need to get used to it maybe. So I needed to get used to it at least, but now I'm fine. Um, so after this, we can also use our length divide uh, just because it creates some variation. So let's um, choose a couple of values. Let's try six values per bar. We want to divide by two and um, we input our variable there, right? This was 0.1 indeed. Um, and let's also apply that. Well, let's first start like this and let's listen to that. Maybe let's choose four here. And let's also apply that only to um, a couple of sections. So we, we'll use our section keyword again, um, and we just put in some, or it needs to be a list, some bars here. One, three, let's do five, seven, we skip some. Um, we can do some more division as we go, go towards the end. Right, so now it's sometimes going to divide them, and again we get this issue with the uh, with the notes being not in the in the chords or the, or the skill that we chose. Um, but for this, as we now know, we can use our harmonic path. So let's do that, and again put in our chords and um, put in our sequence. And here again, we could uh, mess around with uh, which octave we want. Um, let's say type ascending, for example. Or D. And let's see what we can do with the octave. Uh, we can set it to path. Uh, let's leave these decisions for later. I, I will keep the um, I will keep the type at random. But just leave the octave in here. And maybe I'll, I'll mess around with that a little bit later on. Now I have to be careful because I have the same name here for the variable. That should not be the case. Um, so that should be three. Um, after this, we can use uh, similar to what we did with um, the regular gen weight function that uh, we used here. We also have a slightly simpler one, which is called length weight. Um, and this already uses uh, either lengths or rests. Um, so what we can do here is we can um, basically, we only need two values because it knows it's going to be about rests and lengths. So if you do this, let's actually look up the documentation. I think the first value is for lengths. Um, yeah, the first value is the weight of the note length, the second value is the weight of the rest length, and the first thing it wants is a sequence, so let's give it our sequence. 
And then let's see what that sounds like. Um, we get an error there. Uh, that's because the weight is actually a keyword argument. So we type weight. So this, um, if we invert this, let's say nine to one, we should get more rest. Yeah, we get a lot of rest. Um, and if we set this one to nine and this one to one, we get mostly notes. Now, of course, we could also lower this number to go more towards rests. Let's let's go with seven. And again, we can apply that only to uh, certain sections. Uh, all of this is just also to add some more variety in, in the phrases and in the playing. Um, that's why you don't have to be exact with these. And then we'll copy this and we'll set it here. Four, bam. All right. Um, I would love to hear these two sections together right now because we've worked um, with everything individually. Let's first create a uh, right C here. Um, let's in, for good measure, let's put in a pitch transpose um, because this can also take zero as an argument and then later you always have uh, a way to easily transpose a certain section. So we'll put in uh, this one there. So now we have this whole section. Uh, this we need to evaluate first. Ah, this needs to be a point. This is why you should copy your variable names. Now I can try to set it to 12 as well. So we have that um, for our right hand and we have this for our left hand. Um, so let's um, add these to our left and right um, assemble six. So we simply add it here, left B, and we have left C, and then we have right B and right C, and we evaluate uh, these both. And we fix that. All right, so now we could start listening from that section. Now, what we didn't do yet is set a tempo for that. Um, let's let's see. Let's see what happens actually if we just play this whole thing first. Okay, so there's our intro. Sounds good. It's at 60 BPM. We go here to 90 BPM. This is our B section. Also sounds good still. Let's find our third section and it should be there because we went to 3 8. Uh, so let's listen to that. Uh, this section to me is uh, way too fast because we're doing a lot of that division stuff. So um, let's go back to 60 BPM for that. So our B section was 32 bars. So after this, we can say, all right, go to 60 or maybe 61, why not? Uh, for 32 bars, maybe we want to check the length of right C. It is actually 32, so that's good. So now there should be a tempo change um, just before this section right here. Let's see if that is applied. Yeah, so we can see that now it goes to 61 there. So after these 32 bars of 90 BPM, it goes to 32 bars of 61 BPM. Uh, let's play from a little bit before that point. I like that, although the the octave from the path here for the for the right hand might might push it a little bit too low. Let's let's try seek here instead to make it sound a little bit higher and more fresh, if that's even a thing. So we evaluate all of this and let's go there again. 
by the way, um, so right now I'm just scrolling through the score and then starting at a different playback position. You can also do this with the preview score. So, uh, for example, this is, let's say I want to always start at bar 39. Um, I simply add the start keyword here and I can say 39. And then if I evaluate this, it should start from there. The only problem in this case is that my tempo is not being applied anymore. So I will go back to the original and then just find it here. Let's go there. I think it didn't apply my change there. I will evaluate everything with option command one and then try one more time. like that section there. Let's go here. Just going to remo uh, remove the octave keyword there altogether um, and listen to this. Yeah, this is how I like it. And there, and let's set it here. So here you can see one bar where that rest is maybe being applied a little bit too much. But overall, I really like the, the sound. Or I actually, I don't really like the sound because we're using the built-in MIDI, but I do, like, I do like the score, I do like the notes, I do like the rhythms. Um, so in the next video, I think um, we will finish this piece and then we will take a look at DevScore. And DevScore will allow to use a DAW, D-A-W, uh, no matter how you want to pronounce it. Um, which allows us to use our, our own uh, plugins as well and uh, custom pianos. Actually, you can do this with Preview Score as well um, by creating a sound set. Right now, we're using the general MIDI sound set that you can create your custom sound sets with exactly the instruments that you want. Uh, that's a little bit out of the scope of this, uh, this series, though. So, what I will do in the next video, we'll go to a Dev Score and we'll take a look at a lot of chord options and see how we can also integrate this with um, other software that we might use. For now, uh, thank you very much. Uh, great job on uh, following along for these uh, longer, more in-depth videos. And I hope to see you in the next video.